Hates Metagosis Perfect Snellus, where medicine makes perfect sense, let's continue the biology playlist. In the last video, we had an introduction about kidney physiology. Today, we'll dig deeper and talk about the hormones made by your kidney. Because believe it or not, your kidney is an endocrine organ too. And in that sense, the kidney resembles your pituitary gland or your thyroid gland or your pancreas. Welcome to the biology playlist. Please watch these videos in order. Let's review what we've talked about before. Blood comes to the kidney via the renal artery. All right, we need to filter that blood. Get that plasma out, all right, and into the tubule or the nephron. And you start with Bowman's capsule and then proximal convoluted tubule. Then you have the loop of Henle, distal convoluted tubule, collecting tubules, collecting duct, minor calices, major calices, renal pelvis, and then the ureter, the bladder and the urethra. The functions of the kidney were discussed in the last video. Let's enumerate them quickly. Regulation, excretion, secretion, gluconeogenesis. Regulation of water and electrolytes, of your arterial blood pressure, and of the acid-base status in your body. Are you normal? Are you more acidotic? Are you more alkalotic? Oh, by the way, what is the normal pH of the arterial blood it's about 7.4. Your blood is slightly alkaline, which is good for you because normally metabolism secretes acids such as pyruvic acid, lactic acid, phosphoric acid, etc. Unless you have enough bases to counteract the acidity coming from metabolism, you will die from acidosis, which is not fun. If you go to the gym right now and do some PCX90, strenuous exercise, your pH will drop a lot, but thanks to your kidney, it will come back to normal. Excretion function, get the bad stuff out, metabolic waste products, especially urea, and foreign chemicals slash toxins, including medications. And now to the secretory function of the kidney, paracrine function, endocrine function, Paracrine, prostaglandins, and bradykinin. Endocrine, this is today's topic. Erythropoietin, renin, and the active form of vitamin D, also known as 1N25, dihydroxycholecalciferol, also known as calcitriol. Why triol? Tri means three. Here is one hydroxyl group at carbon number one, another carboxyl group at carbon number 25, and this compound has a third hydroxyl group, that's why calcitriol. Why did we call renin renin? Because it's a protein, ends in IN, that comes from renal tissue. Oh, renin. Why did we call erythropoietin erythropoietin? IN means protein or peptide, etc. Erythro means red, referring to your red blood cells. Poietin, synthesis, growth, pro. Oh, it's a hormone that is pro red blood cell production from the bone marrow. Exactly right. The kidney has endocrine functions. Indeed, we have EPO, we have 1 and 25 dihydroxy vitamin D, and we have renin. But what is the difference among autocrine, paracrine, and endocrine? Easy. If the cell secretes a substance to act on the same cell, this is autocrine. Auto means self. If the cell secretes a substance to act on the neighboring cells, through the interstitial fluid, this is paracrine, because para means parallel. But if the cell secretes something into a blood vessel, into the bloodstream, endo, inside your body, which will take this substance to distant locations all over your body, this is endocrine. This is the story of the renin, the EPO, and the vitamin D. EPO is to tell the bone marrow to make red blood cells. 1N25 dihydroxy vitamin D is the active form of vitamin D, which is super good for your bones because vitamin D, believe it or not, increases calcium, which is good for bones. And renin is good because it raises your blood pressure in case you have a hypotension. As we have discussed before, your blood is made of plasma and cells. The plasma, water and proteins, the proteins, albumin and globulin, the globulins, Alpha globulins, beta globulins, or gamma globulins. All right, this is the story of the plasma. How about the cells? We have red blood cells, white blood cells, and platelets. What is the function of EPO? EPO is a hormone that comes out of the kidney and tells your red blood cells 
in the bone marrow to be fruitful and multiply. Hey, Medicosis, let me ask you a question. Is the bone marrow the only organ that makes red blood cells? It's the main organ in adults. But let's go back to embryology. Here is the sequence of events. Yolk sac, liver, spleen, bone marrow. Yolk sac, liver, spleen, bone marrow. When you were a tiny embryo in your mother's womb, the first organ to make red blood cells was the yolk sac. And then liver. And then the spleen. And now it is your bone marrow. Under the influence of EPO, which comes from the kidney. Integration, baby. Suppose that I have anemia. What will the kidney do? The kidney will respond by increasing erythropoietin production. Erythropoietin, synthesis of red blood cells. More red blood cells. Where did they come from? Well, from their parents. All right, reticulocytes, yeah. And before them, erythroblasts, etc. Absolutely right. This is a normal kidney. This is physiology. Let me tell you about pathology. A bad kidney, e.g. chronic kidney disease, is not making any EPO. Bone marrow is not making any red blood cells and you become tired and pale, pale and tired, anemic. Arguably the most common pathology in the world, in the history of humans. Although I always wonder which one is more common, anemia or errors of refraction of the eyesight. We're done with EPO. Let's talk about vitamin D. Or, I'm sorry, I should be more specific. The active form of vitamin D. The calcitriol. The 1 and 25 dihydroxy vitamin D or vitamin D3. Here's the story of vitamin D. Not kidney, not kidney, kidney. So the kidney is gonna function at a later part of the pathway for vitamin D activation. This is the active form right here. This is the calcitriol that I'm talking about. Trial three. Now let's go back to square one. All right, vitamin D. I need sunlight. I also need a good liver. Vitamin D needs a pro-vitamin D before vitamin D. What's that? Seven, dehydrocholesterol. Cholesterol. Oh, that's why I need my gut because I eat fat. And I need my cholesterol because it makes fat. All right, this is dietary cholesterol versus de novo cholesterol synthesis in the liver. You need a good gut and a good liver. And you need some good skin. Why? To reabsorb sunlight. What's the name of the compound now? Cholecalciferol. What does choli mean? It means liver or bile. That's why cholesterol is called cholesterol. It's a steroid. It's a fat made by the liver. If I were to draw the chemical formula of cholecalciferol, you will see one hydroxyl group there. Okay. Let's add another hydroxyl group. Who's going to add this? The liver thanks to an enzyme known as 25-hydroxylase. Why ACE? Because it's an enzyme. Why hydroxyl? Because we're adding a hydroxyl group. Why 25? Because I'm adding this hydroxyl group at carbon number 25. And therefore, I have a compound known as 25-hydroxyvitamin D, also known as 25-hydroxycholecalciferol or calcithidiol. Why dio? because originally I had one hydroxyl group and I added another hydroxyl group, so in total I have two so far. Then the kidney will take it to the next level, the apotheosis, by adding a third hydroxyl group at carbon number one, one alpha or the alpha one carbon. Look at that, the 25 has become one and 25 dihydroxyvitamin D or calcitriol, why? Because we started with one OH, the liver added a second, and the kidney added a third. So I, now I have a calcitriol, the most active form of vitamin D. So listen to me carefully because these three words are synonyms. 1 and 25 dihydroxyvitamin D, 1 and 25 dihydroxycholecalciferol, or calcitriol, or simply vitamin D3. This is the one that increases calcium. This is the one that's good for the bones. And this is one of the mechanisms by which parathyroid hormone, which comes from your parathyroid gland, raises calcium in your blood. If you want to learn more about this, I have a complete video on vitamin D in my biochemistry playlist on YouTube. We are done with EPO. We are done with vitamin D. Let's talk about renin. Mark my words. Haven't I told you in the last video that a kidney without blood pressure is screwed, aka no BP equals no PP? 
Your kidney cannot function, your kidney cannot make urine without an adequate blood pressure in your arteries. And that's why if I get involved in a car accident, if I lose blood, my extracellular fluid volume will decrease. And therefore, my effective arterial blood volume will also decrease. Who's gonna perfuse the kidney then? Nobody. I get hypotension before I know it, the kidney is screwed. We call this pre-renal azotemia or pre-renal acute kidney injury or acute renal failure. And that's why the kidney will act in her own self-interest and try to regulate the volume of the extracellular fluid. Otherwise, the kidney will get screwed. Imagine that you are a young doctor just getting started and opening your private office and you only have one patient. Wouldn't you like to maintain and take care of that patient? Of course, because without this one patient, I'm screwed. That's why when your blood pressure is low, the kidney will respond. And when the blood pressure is high, the kidney will also take action. If the blood pressure is low, the kidney will reabsorb more salt and water to increase the blood pressure back to normal. Conversely, when your blood pressure is high, the kidney will do the opposite. And now to the renin angiotensin aldosterone system. This is fight flight, baby. All right, there is a dangerous situation. Okie dokie, dangerous means sympathetic time. Why do you call it dangerous? Because I have hypotension. Because I've just been in a car accident, I lost a lot of blood. And therefore, I have hypotension, fight, flight, sympathetic. Sympathetic acts with alpha and beta receptors. Let's talk about beta-1. Beta-1 is found on the kidney, which stimulates the kidney to release renin. So the story goes like this. I lost blood. My extracellular fluid volume decreased. My effective arterial blood volume decreased, including the blood in the carotid sinus and the otic arches, triggering baroreceptor reflex. The brain will feel it, send sympathetic fibers. Sympathetic fibers will secrete what? Norepinephrine. Onto what? Onto the beta-1 receptor, which is found in the kidney. The kidney will respond by secreting renin, the protein hormone, the peptide hormone that comes from the renal tissue, which will convert angiotensinogen. What do you call, why do you call it angiotensinogen? Because it will cause genesis of angiotensin 1. That's the job of renin, to convert angiotensinogen to angiotensin 1. And then angiotensin-converting enzyme, which comes from your lungs, is going to convert angiotensin 1 into angiotensin 2. Angiotensin 2 has two functions. The first function is in the name. Angio means vessel, tensin means to tense, to vasoconstrict. So it will vasoconstrict those arteries, which will help increase your blood pressure and bring it back to normal. Because remember that your arterial blood pressure equals cardiac output times total peripheral resistance. And if you remember, resistance is inversely proportional to radius. As I constrict the vessel, the radius goes down. Resistance goes up. When resistance goes up, blood pressure goes up and back to normal. This was the first function of angiotensin 2, to tense the vessel. Function number 2 of angiotensin 2 is to go to the adrenal cortex, specifically the zona glomerulosa, and tell her to secrete lots of mineralocorticoids, aldosterone time, which acts on the aldosterone receptor in the kidney, especially the last part of the nephron. We're talking about the distal convoluted tubule and the collecting ducts. To do what exactly? Reabsorb two things and dump two things. Retain sodium and water. Get rid of potassium and hydrogen. When you retain salt and water, you will increase my blood pressure back to normal. When you dump potassium, you get hypokalemia. When you get rid of hydrogen ions, you get metabolic alkalosis. That's why renin is the hero of raising your blood pressure back to normal. Why is this so important? Because the kidney without blood pressure is screwed. Forgive my language. The effect of this ACE enzyme on bradykinin was discussed in the last video. Pause and review. In an upcoming video, I'll tell you about the difference between obligated water and free water. What did aldosterone do, please? It reabsorbs salt and water. Say it again. Salt and water, medicosis. All right, salt and water. This water is obligated to follow the salt. This is an example of obligated water. You know what a free water is? It's a water that doesn't care about salt. 
it's not attracted to the salt because it is free and independent. Take a deep breath and let me ask you a question. Which of these should be filtered through the kidney tubules? Should we filter plasma? Should we filter all of it? Should we filter the plasma proteins? Should we filter those blood cells? Should red blood cells appear in your urine? Should white blood cells appear in your urine? What do you think? Let me know the answer in the comment section and you will find out in the next video. Pause and review and one more time. Repetition is the mother of pedagogy. To take your pedagogy to the next level, check out my renal physiology course, which you can download today at medicosisperfectionalist.com. Comes with 10 videos and cases, my PDF notes, and a humongous perfectionalist ultimate notebook, which you should print and keep for you forever. Knowledge is incremental. Keep learning, keep improving. Your patients depend on you. Just like how the obligated water depend on the sodium and exactly like how the kidney depends on adequate arterial blood pressure. If you want to learn about kidney pharmacology, check out my diuretics videos inside my cardiac pharmacology course on my website. And for a limited time, you can get a 30% discount by using promo code SAVE30. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe, hit the bell, and click on the join button. You can support me here or here. Go to my website to download my courses. Be safe, stay happy, study hard. This is Medicosis Perfectionalis, where medicine makes perfect sense.